morning. I'm not continuing until somebody says good morning back to me. No one ever wishes me good morning. <coughs> I don't hear anybody. I'm waiting. <coughs> Fine. If that's the way you want it, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. See you later. It's the president. Good morning. Wait, don't leave. I can't believe this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rush Limbaugh. Thank you, thank you so much. The buffet will begin immediately after this program. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I, I have to go. Please be seated. Be seated. Make, make yourselves at home. People are looking around. Oh, the camera. One lady continued to stand because the camera was on her, and she said, "America wants to see me." And so she's <laughs> anyway, I want to run something by you people, if you can hear in the studio audience and uh, you at home as well. I have been asked. Only just found out about this. A major network is, is doing a series of discussion shows, I think in prime time, I'm not sure, but it will be either prime time or late night, on the OJ. Either prime time or late night, on the OJ Simpson trial. And they're going to have a panel of experts to discuss it, and they're going to start these shows when the case goes to the jury. And that will be very soon, maybe the first part of next week. And they've asked a number of what they say, and so I'm not surprised they called me, prominent people, to tape uh, some thoughts about the lingering effects, if any, on society of this trial. So I've been backstage running some things by some people because I just know, I mean, they're going to have Gerald Ford, they're going to have Henry Kissinger. And, you know, I can, I can just see Gerald Ford doing his best impersonation of a potato sitting there analyzing this and Kissinger, these guys are not exactly going to breathe a lot of life into all this. <laughs> Kissinger will you know, obviously say some foreign policy ramifications. I think he's foreign policy. So I'm sitting there thinking, and, and I just want to see what you think of this. Looking at the camera, and the, the camera, the network camera saying, lingering effects. Actually, I don't think there are going to be any to speak of. Everybody thinks that what goes on in America is happening for the first time. The O.J. trial, people think, it's never been this bad. And I don't agree with that. We had the Scopes Monkey trial, and that was a circus. We had the Lindbergh trial, that was a circus. We've had circus trials everywhere. We've had all kinds of things. And besides, there will be, especially in California, no lingering effects. Anybody who thinks we're going to start convicting people in this country, nothing's going to change. <laughs> they liked it. They somewhat liked it. You got the humor, right? You didn't set you up. Uh, <clears throat> there could be another one. Um, well, I have studied this. I really have. And I have uh, I've come to the conclusion that uh, uh, in California, and uh, this does bode ill for America, and I'm happy to be on this show to be able to explain this, but it is apparent that um, we do intend every trial there is. We're going to convict as many cops as we can in America, and I think that... <clears throat> and I just love to, because you know the network is going to have these serious people waiting. The way this is going to happen, after a commercial, they're going to, they're going to bump back into the show with videotaped comments. Newt has done some of these. They've got a bunch of people doing it, and me. And they expect all the others to be dead serious and full of heavy weight and full of the discussion of the ramifications. And I thought, just to lighten it up, can you imagine the serious guest panelist coming back to the show to discuss Mr. Limbaugh's assertion that, don't worry, we're not going to start convicting people in America? 
Um, I think it could be fun. I haven't decided firmly what I'm going to do, but I wanted to run it by you. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, just some, some uh, business here to, to clean up from previous programs. You may recall, especially those of you in New York, that talk show hostette Ricky Lake was uh, protesting. There she is now. There's, in fact, here's the story. Ricky Lake decided to get some publicity. And as is the case with most talk shows, she decided she'd rather do it off the air than on the air. So she decided that she would get together with a bunch of animal rights wackos from PETA and go to Carl Lagerfeld's office. He's a designer, and he, he designs things with fur, and throw paint on it and destroy his office and dirty it up. Here it is. And the press thought this was neat, and uh, everybody covered it. And basically, she was arrested and found guilty for destruction of property and disturbing the peace and so forth. And her sentence was four days of community service. And what they have assigned her as part of her community service, or as the total commitment of her community service, she has to go into the subway system of New York and clean it up. She has to go in there, she has to go in with a broom, clean the subway, clean the graffiti, and she's opposing this. She says that what she wants to do is donate her community service time to the gay men's health crisis, uh, making Christmas baskets that she would personally deliver to AIDS patients. The DA is saying, wait a minute, the guilty don't choose their punishment, even in New York. This is not California. The guilty do not. <laughs> I'll do that. That's what I'll do. Now, I don't understand why she's objecting to being assigned to the subway. That's where her show takes place every day, folks. She may as well. I mean, she doesn't want to be around people in the subway. Get rid of her guests. Get rid of her whole audience. I mean, her show is subterranean anyway. She may as well just go down into the subway, into the bowels, amongst the graffiti producers, and say, hey, here's where my show really comes from every day. Instead of just doing the community service, they ought to assign her to take her set and her whole studio down there and have her do it on the tracks. That's just... I mean, these shows are killing this country. I mean, say, the ramifications of the Furman trial, give me a break. How about the ramifications of the Ricky Lake show, the Montel Williams show, and all these other daytime TV talk shows, which are, I mean, the, the, just the modern museum of modern American societal decay. Just overwhelming. Oh, I'll sneak in a comment when I'm on the CBS show. Now, my friends, how many of you in this audience love animals? You describe yourselves as animal lovers? I... There you go. There you go. We have... We have compassionate people in the audience. I wish to say here at the outset, I too love animals. I'm a sucker for the cute-faced pets that we all love. Uh, I, and, and people find this strange because they think I don't like animals based on my long history of animal rights updates. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, I basically have arguments with uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals and this notion that if it weren't for human beings, life would be wonderful. You know, I believe that we're as much a part of nature as anything else on the planet is, but the extremists, the wackos, and the animal rights, and the plants' rights, and the water rights, and everybody else's rights movements think that man only plunders nature, and gee, if we weren't around, then things would really be fine. So I uh, love to poke fun and tweak these people. Remember uh, the oil spill at Prince William Sound? Uh, all these otters got covered with uh, oil and people's hearts went out. Oh, those bears are so cute. Look at the oil, an evil company. I don't need to get drunk. I need to kill them. This is not fair. So we spent all this money to clean up the otters in addition to the beaches. By the time we got through, it was $80,000 per otter to clean them up up there. And to symbolize the success of the program, it came time to release an otter back to its natural environment because the place had been cleaned up, so they put it in a cage, let everybody out of school. High school bands showed up playing all kinds of songs. No, I'm not kidding. And, and, the, and the, the whole town showed up, and they're there raving the flag. The hot dog vendors are there, and they roll the otter out, and they open the gate, and the thing escapes, and it hits the ocean. People go, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so cute. You get a little thing rolled on his back and was doing one of these things. And about a hundred yards out there, people saw a fin. <laughs> this, this is a true story. The townspeople looked on in horror 
as Shamu. <laughs> Behaving totally naturally, encircled the otter and gulped it down in one swallow. $80,000 down, and ever, oh, I mean, there were tears. The little school kids, their, 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 mothers, their mothers covered their eyes so they wouldn't see the horror of all this. And it's nature. You know, people have about animal rights. How about the way they treat each other, for crying out loud? Much less what? Well, it's happened again, ladies and gentlemen. In uh, Great Britain, British bird watchers travel from all over the country. I'm sure they had on T-shirts, and they had on caps and binoculars. They showed up in buses, the cheapest excursion and hotel rates they could find so they could all gather to watch a rarely seen migrating bird called the red-necked phalaro. That is... Put it back up. When I point at it, it should be there. The red-necked phalaro. What? Somebody say, I thought I heard a bird cooing out there. <laughs> anyway, they, they, they all spotted it. Somebody said, there it is, there it is. One migrating bird goes from Scotland to Africa during this time of year. And a four-foot pike. Four-foot pike just jumped out of the water and swatted the thing whole. All that was left were two feathers. And the Bird Watchers Club stared in horror. <laughs> Our cameras were there, ladies and gentlemen. Here is how it looked if you were. Here comes the Red Neck Taylor, even now. And uh, one moment it's there. And... <laughs> Histoire. No, not there. I love this animal news. We'll have more when it's funny like this. We'll be back with the rest of the show right after this. Don't go away. Now you can receive free this one-hour full-color home video, Ronald Reagan, an American president. The American spectator's got guts. It uh, tells you what the rest of the media is afraid to report. It's witty, it's funny. You've got to read it for yourself. It's so incorrect. I like that. Sure, The Spectator's controversial. But now everybody's reading it. In every issue of The American Spectator, I find reports and opinions that are daring, cantankerous, outspoken, funny, important, and honest. The American Spectator cuts through the nonsense of news and world events to go right to what is really happening in the United States and around the world. You won't find the American Spectator on many newsstands, so this may be your only chance to get a copy now at this special introductory rate. Call toll-free 1-800-468-3100 now and we'll rush you free and postpaid this one-hour home video, Ronald Reagan and American President, along with 12 issues of the American Spectator for only $29.97. Call now for the American Spectator. How many times over the last 30 years have I shown you how you learn auto mechanics one tool at a time? And when your toolbox is full and you get your certificate, these tools are yours to keep and we recommend you for a job, all in a matter of months. Call us here at Apex. Let's talk it over. 212-675-2222. That's 212-675-2222. Before the season premiere of The X-Files... That's a woman with a gun to her head. ...things are really getting strange. A brand new strange luck. Then, has Agent Mulder been silenced for good? We have control. The only thing more terrifying than the truth... Where are the files? ...is what the government will do to hide it. They'll kill you one of two ways. Experience the most startling television event of the year. I don't think I won't do it. Strange Luck in The X-Files, tomorrow beginning at 8 on Fox 5. This year, spend more time, not more money, in a beachside destination that's becoming America's first choice for family entertainment, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We're closer than you think, with more excitement than you dream and full of the value and variety that have made us famous. And now, for a limited time, we've got your ticket to big-time fun with Premier Resorts packages starting at only $99. This year, go half the distance for twice the fun. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thank you. Welcome back. Okay, I love doing this. You know, I, I, I absolutely love going back to the past to make a point. You remember a couple summers ago during the great 1990 budget debate, 
the uh, our 93 budget debate i'm sorry we went back and found a speech by president john kennedy to the economic club of new york in which he sounded just like a ditto head just like ronald reagan talking about tax cuts and economic growth well, we've done much the same thing on welfare reform. You know, the Senate passed their welfare reform version, goes to the House Senate Conference Committee, and uh, the days of entitlements, welfare entitlements, are actually over in the United States. Now, I want to show you first off Senator Ted Kennedy on the floor of the Senate on Tuesday. Now, what it, just, just, just watch this for the, the, the comparative points we're going to make after it. Here it is. We will go down in history as the day the Senate turns its back on needy children and poor mothers stri struggling to make ends meet. It'll be remembered as the day the Senate broke a noble promise to the most vulnerable Americans. All right, broke a promise. The Senate broke a promise. Maybe say, when was this promise made? Was it the Great Society, Gen Lyndon Johnson was 64? Was it uh, the FDR New Deal? When was this great promise made? Now I want to take you back to 1968 presidential campaign of Robert Kennedy. And this is from a campaign commercial of Senator Robert Kennedy, the brother of Senator Ted Kennedy. Remember this never-ending promise. Watch this. I think that we have to move beyond the question of welfare in so many areas of the United States. I think welfare is demeaning and destructive of the human being and of his family. But instead of welfare, instead of a dole, instead of a handout, what we need in the United States is to provide jobs for all of our people. Hey, that's 99% right, and I'm even going to grant him the, the remaining 1% on providing jobs. He thinks we need economic growth that create jobs. This is also a good lesson to show you just how much liberalism has changed. Bobby Kennedy was considered a liberal in his day. This is 1968. Now, that's four years after the Great Society War on Poverty. What promise? Doesn't sound like he's bought into any promise. I want to show you more from this campaign video, Robert Kennedy again, just to cement the point. Here it is. If you look over the period of the last 30 years, we relied chiefly and primarily on government, on Washington. I think we have to have a new philosophy. What was acceptable in the 1930s and what we needed in the 1930s dealt with some of those problems. And the same for the 1940s and the 1950s and the early 1960s. Whether it be the New Deal or the Fair Deal or the days of President Eisenhower or the New Frontier under President John Kennedy. They dealt with some of the problems, but we have new problems. And what their solutions or their answers are not necessarily applicable to this day and age. We don't rely just on government. We're not relying just on Washington. We don't centralize all authority and all government and all ways of life just in Washington. That we decentralize it and we return government and the control of government to the people themselves. Golly, it sounds like Newt Gingrich! Did you hear that? Who did that sound like? Other than me. Who was that extremist? Who was that mean-spirited man who wants to starve your kids? That sounded just like Newt Gingrich. That sounded just like Ronald Reagan. That sounded just like me. It sure doesn't sound like today's Dick Gephardt or Tom Daschle or Ted Kennedy, does it? No, sir. That's 1968. I thought you'd like to see that. And we have more from the floor of the house. Right after this, we get back. Don't go away. If you have an idea for a new product or how to improve an existing product, call Inventors Helpline now at the number on your screen. Inventors Helpline is offering this valuable information absolutely free. When you call right now, you'll receive the 10-step invention process confidential documents, and important disclosure forms. So if you have a new idea, do something now. Call the number on your screen. For your free inventor's kit, call 800-977-6700. That's 800-977-6700. Sprint Sense International gives you great rates to countries all over the world. What more could you want? How about some cash? Cash would be good. Yes, some cash back. Presenting Sprint Sense International with something new, cash back. Call now for these simply great rates on calls to countries all around the world. Plus, get rewarded with 10% cash back for every dollar you spend. For me, that would be at least $100 a year. Cash back on all my calls to Ireland? There's no limit to the amount of cash back you can earn. Month after month, you'll see your cash add up, so it pays to stay with Sprint. Call now and we'll even switch you for free. What about domestic cards? 
You'll get cash back on domestic calls, too. And with Sprint Sense International, you'll get a great 10 cents a minute rate on every state to state call. So call now. Cash back would be great. Good idea. Cash back. It's one phrase that's understood around the world. Get simply great rates now and 10% cash back every year. Call now. 1 800 293 2793. All right, folks, I want to show you a piece of video that's a lot of fun. As you know, the welfare reform bill passed both houses. Now it goes to the conference committee. The president can't wait to sign it. Democrats, though, they're digging in on Medicare reform. Folks. They're not going to let the whole welfare state go down if they can help it. And so what they have to do is lie, scare, fearmonger, and a number of other things. And I want to show you just the latest example of this on the floor of the House of Representatives from my old buddy Sam Gibbons from Florida. Watch this. That is the most complicated piece of legislation that this Congress will take up this year. You're trying to sneak it past us very cleverly, very stealthily, without any hearings. Stop no the one stop, will stop, understand stop, 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 stop the tape. Sneak what? How many of you have never heard of House Medicare reform? How many of you do not know the Republicans want to reform Medicare? My friends, <laughs> this is the first you're hearing of it? My test didn't work. Never mind, Sam may have a point. My point is I think everybody in the country knows that Medicare reform is on the table. There's nothing stealth about it. It's like Mr. Gephardt. There's nothing stealth about our plan to get you out of power. You know, we're right in your face with our desire to do it. We're not hiding at all. Resume the tape with the Congressman Gibbons. No one will understand it. Look at me now. How can you, how can you do such a thing? The that is the here. most ridiculous argument I have ever heard. The silence, the silence of the Republican side is typical of the silence that they've had all along on this Medicare proposal. They're going to take $270 billion. How do you know that? Pockets of Medicare people and put it into the hands of the very rich constituents. You know that's what you're doing. And you won't give us any hearings. One oh. day, and we don't even have a bill to have a hearing on. Oh. What a joke. What a joke. My friends, uh, how does he know that it cuts $270 billion if it's a stealth plan? <laughs> and don't forget, it doesn't cut $270 billion. It grows Medicare by 6% a year. There is no cut. This, the welfare reform, or the ref pardon me, the Medicare reform bill, I've seen it. I've seen the points. I've seen the objectives. That, why are they so angry? If they're so angry, why are they angry? They have nothing to be angry at if there's no bill. They're angry because they know what's in the bill and they don't like it because it is another step toward the dismantling of the welfare state, their establishment. And they can't do anything to stop it. They don't have the numbers. We'll take a break and be back with one final segment right after this. Get your pen ready to put something at the top of your list. Try Investor's Business Daily for two weeks free. Investor's Business Daily provides the entrepreneur with valuable information in a very condensed format. And that's extremely important. I mean, most of us, my friends in the, in the business for themselves, work 20-hour days. And as much as we can cram into that, as much information as we can get quickly, is important to us. In my job, you have to read an awful lot of publications. Investor's Business Daily tends to go home with me because I always spend about you know, 15 or 20 minutes a day going through IBD. Uh, I have to admit, I start with uh, the uh, stock tables. I always look at executive update section, uh, those articles that really talk about a particular company's strategy and why it's performing the way it's performing. You'll also get this exciting free gift, the tape 100 Ways to Improve your investment results. Call us toll free at 800-542-3700. There's no obligation. It's absolutely free. Don't put off until tomorrow what you really need to do right now. Hi, I'm Neil Patrick, President, with a great offer from Wardley. Discover the fun of owning an aquarium in Wardley's FinFacts Aquarium Handbook, yours free at Petland Discounts, featuring the most popular tropical marine pond and goldfish, plus recommended feeding programs. Join the fun. Get Wardley's Aquarium Handbook free at Petland Discounts. Discounts 
Do you need a new mattress? Get the guaranteed lowest price on Sealy Posturepedic, Simmons Beautyrest, or Serta Perfect Sleeper. Save 65% off department store prices. Call 1-800-SLEEPYS. Get two-hour, four-hour, same or next day delivery. Just call 1-800-SLEEPYS. Our trained mattress professionals are waiting to help or visit any of our 70 tri-state stores. So get big savings on your new mattress. Call 1-800-SLEEPYS. 1-800-S-L-E-E-P-Y-S. The Center for Children and Families has been protecting our city's children and promoting kids' success for more than 75 years. Call us for information. Has Agent Mulder been silenced for good? We have control. The only thing more terrifying than the truth... Where are the files? ...is what the government will do to hide it. They'll kill you one of two ways. Experience the most startling television event of the year. Don't think I won't do it. The X-Files, season premiere tomorrow at 8 on Fox 5. Here, my friends, Congressman James Traffic. Speaker, some talented writers labored for years to get their manuscripts published, never get a chance. But in America, if you blow up a few people and terrorize a nation, you become Ernest Hemingway overnight. That's right, just ask the Unabomber. The Unabomber who killed at least three people, injured at least 23 others over a period of 18 years, demanded that his manuscript be published and major newspapers around the country, fearing more violence, oblige. What's next, Mr. Speaker? Will the Unabomber demand time on Larry King? I say it's a sad day in America when our newspapers have to, quote, unquote, protect the public. The truth is, while the FBI is hiding behind the Fifth Amendment, the Unabomber is qualifying for Social Security as a terrorist. Beam me up, Mr. Speaker. Yield back to Donald Trump. That's it, folks. We are out of time. See you next time. Glad you were with us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Quit chewing tobacco with Mint Snuff All Mint Chew. Mint Snuff is made from mint, not tobacco. For a store near you, call 1-800-EAT-MINT. Now available at Sam's Club. Hot Pockets, filled with pepperoni pizza or ham and cheese and a crispy crust. What are you gonna pick? Hot Pockets. Try Lean Pockets, too. Robert's classic laxative line, including doctor-recommended colace and pericolase, crystal clear squib mineral oil, and easy-to-use squib glycerin suppositories from Robert's Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Betadine Antibiotic Plus Moisturizer, new from the number one brand in hospitals. <laughs> If you'd like to order a video cassette of Rush's TV show for only $24.95, just call Video Archives at 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. For a transcript, send $5 to Burrell's, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039, or call 1-800-777-TEXT.